These are my Monster 659 engine crankcases. Uh, I did clean them all up a year or so ago, maybe. I think, or more. I can't remember, actually more, actually. Probably, it was probably 2021 that I cleaned these up and painted them with uh, a VHT product. And I've got all the bearings for them now, so I'm going to heat them up. Knock the bearings out, put new bearings in. They have all been cleaned. I did knock the output shaft bearing out at some point in time. Uh, and now I have to get these ones out. I've never removed one of these mains before. These mains have the flange as part of the main. On the earlier mains, it was just a bearing. And then this, there's a steel flange in the cases. And that flange carried the bearing. The bearing used to look like this. And it would sit into a steel flange. Now the bearings have the steel flange on them. I've not removed one of these before, so I don't know how easy it's going to come out or go back in, uh, but we'll find out. With the older style, often you would heat the cases and the and the steel flange up to put the bearings in, and you'd have to try and get in. You have to tap it in to get in, let, let it all go cold, and you turn the cases over, and the bearing could just fall out in the bench, and then you could just put it back in again. I'm not sure why they um, why they didn't go in that easy the first time around, but that was pretty normal. So I'm going to heat it up with a couple of heat guns. I'll give it about 10 minutes with the heat guns. I usually set a timer for using heat guns because it is just the most boring thing you can ever do is heat up something with a heat gun for 10 minutes. So I have to use a timer to make sure I actually do it. So that's our 10 minutes up. This is the cases are 100 odd degrees in places, 120 degrees. Okay, so first we'll get this out. The reason I put the slide hammer attachment in this bearing before we started is because there's a seal underneath it. I wanted to protect the seal if I could. There you go. See if this one comes out. Oh, this thing is going to fish out. There we go, and out. See some of the main bearings running away there. So, the outer of this main has a groove running around it, and that groove is where the oil transfer is. So you can see, oh, they are very hot. <laughs> There's a hole here, and that's the oil feed from here, from the oil pump. And then 
oil will come out. This is the left hand side. Yo, that is hot. I need two rags to hold it. And the oil will go out. There's one there, and that's the one that will probably go to the clutch. This is a wet clutch engine and they have oil feed to the clutch, which is a bit stupid, I think, but they obviously had a reason for it. And there's one just there, and that is for the piston oiling jet, just there. That's all there is on the left-hand side. The right-hand side has a bit more. So I'll give them a quick clean, and then we'll whack the new bearings in. Hold it. Just hold it with a rag to make sure it doesn't take off on me. I'm trying to do this. They are very hot. Which is what you want. Makes everything come out easy and go in easy. Some of the new bearings. The new bearings are in a little esky here. I don't have a fridge here, but they're in spent the night in the freezer at home and so they're now in a little esky. Hopefully, still cool enough to be shrunk. This left hand input shaft bearing in the older or the, in the dry clutch engines has a, a sort of a shim washer thing, which is I think is to build a, an oil well in there. So whenever you pull one of those bearings out of like a 900 or 1000 or something, it will have a just a flat, very thin shim behind there. And you can sometimes reuse it or just replace it. Okay. This one goes out, I can feel it out here. So that's the only three holes on this side. How hot are they still? And they're down around 80 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll just get all my bearings out and ready to go. Then I'll give them another maybe three or four minutes. Set timer for three minutes. I've just put a big washer over the seal. Keep some heat away from it. Back to 100 odd degrees. <clears throat> the left hand side has the small main in it. In. A lot of these should just drop in. Bang, just like that. And the main. Just like that. Well, that was easy. So you saw these ones just drop in. I'm so happy that that main just dropped in. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a huge bearing like that doesn't go in straight. I was going to sort of put that one on top of it, and that on that, and then that on there, and knock it in if I had to, but I don't. 
So this one's done. Uh, now it can sit for a few hours to cool down. And I'll do the other one. When I pull this inner out of the, the input shaft bearing, I always keep them with the bearings. So I get a little bag that's got input on it because there's, there is an identical one on the other end of, of the output shaft. I'm not sure if it matters. They aren't made as a pair, obviously. I'm not sure if they're assembled as a, a matched pair in any way. I'm not sure. One thing with the main bearings is you can actually knock the centers out. Like I have out of this one. And you can inspect them if you like. I'll usually just replace them. But on engines with noisy, be, noisy main bearings that get the, the zoom zoom noise, all this will be really roughly pitted. And often the balls themselves, you'll see balls that have chunks out of them. And that's rooted main bearings. This one, interestingly, this is the left hand side, which is the alternator side. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen balls in this one. And the drive side, well, this side is the primary drive side. It's a lot bigger bearing, but it only has seven balls in it. It's a bit strange. That's back together again, but it's rough. When you heat these up, all these bearings have plastic cages now. They have had plastic cages for years. And when you put that much heat into them, they don't really melt and they don't really burn. They kind of do a bit of both. But there's no way I would reuse a plastic cage bearing after you've exposed it to that much heat. It just can't be a good thing. And that's the timing shaft seal in the left-hand case. The timing shaft seal in the right-hand case, which is this one here, is a barrel roller, just like the, the input and output shaft bearings. And the bearing here, which is the big bearing, is behind the clutch. And on the other case, this one's behind the sprocket. It's just a normal style bearing. I figured this time around I'd prepare myself for getting this one out, knocking it out. So grab the big 55mm socket. And that will do that. I usually have intentions of one day getting around to making some some nice bearing drifts to knock all these bearings out, but I just never get to it. If I did enough of it, maybe I would actually get around to doing it. But as long as you're gentle and you're careful and you don't belt bearings, if you're trying to rock a bearing out, you just have to be really gentle and just tap, 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 tap. If you start belting them, you'll jam them in the cases and just make a mess of it, start gouging the housing. The last thing you want to do is damage the crankcase around the bearing. And as I say, this is the first time actually I've dealt with these bearings that are bearing and flange in one. Okay, we'll heat them up. I'll put the slide hammer attachment in this side before I start as well, because it just means it's one less thing you need to do when they're hot and you're trying to get it all done in a rush. Okay, 10 minutes on the heat guns. Boredom take two. So 10 minutes is up. We've got the 120, 110, 105. So let's hook in. Drop them really hard, the fairings fall out. Oh, 
two of the three. Let's knock this one out. Hopefully that was nice and straight. Okay, so once again, I'll give them a clean where the bearings were, blow through the oil passages, and then a bit more heat and back together. brake clean sizzling these holes here in this case there's a couple of round washers and some hex head bolts in the other case there's a on the output shaft there's a C section with a couple of countersunks I had already removed those and if you are going to bang them on the bench there would have been dowels here and here to locate the crankcase halves I usually pull the dowels out if I can that way if you sit this case on its face, you know it's flat on the bench. If it's got dowels in it, it's not going to be flat. And you might stress something if you start belting it. I try and avoid belting it, but sometimes you just have to hit them. The holes in here. What have we got? We've got a hole here, which is the horizontal piston oiling jet. There's a hole here, and that will go out to this hole, which is the oil feed to the horizontal head. There's a hole here, which is the oil feed to the vertical head. And then the supply hole oh, is this hole here. And that oil comes from the same gallery out of the oil filter that supplies the oil going across the engine here that feeds the left hand case. So we'll just give those a blow through, make sure they're all clear. it's all those blown through. When I wash them, I usually wash them in the parts washer and then I get the pressure washer, the water pressure washer and pressure wash them and run water through all these holes. Blowing air through holes like this will get out anything loose but if there's anything in there you really need to move, water is by far the best way. Or oil, you can even pump oil into them if there was a blockage and you've got an oil can and poked it in the hole and went squirt, 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 squirt because it's viscous, it's very viscous compared to air, it will push things out that air just won't. Okay, so they're clean. Clean. I'll put a bit more heat into them in about three minutes or so and then we shall drop the new bearings in.
which is lovely. Heat and cooling and they just drop in and it's so much easier than having to hit them in. And that's done.